Hello there, so Mr. Welcome back to class. So this is the continuation of our previous class on how to draft a plunging neckline. So in this class, I'll be learning how to cut it out and how to actually sew it. So I have my beautiful fabric. I have this piece of fabric which I'll be using for this class. And I also have this two net which I'll be using. So this is like the original two net. This is the one I'll be using. And of course, you'll be needing your SD that's to fuse the fabric and of course you'll be needing your lining so i was going to go ahead and place this on fold this is my pattern so we haven't seen the video so let's actually go ahead and watch the video and then come back and learn how to sew this i'll be leaving the link in the description box for you so i'm going to fold my fabric this is my piece of fabric. i'm going to fold it on the wrong side like so And then i'll place my fabric on it now please note that for the center front now we would be having a joining at that part there so we'll be leaving about half inch seam allowance for the joining and also the side front now you'll be leaving about 1.5 inch seam allowance or if you can work with one inch then you're free to actually go ahead and work with one inch like so that's going to go ahead and pin this down. I'm going to secure with my pin. Like so. So the space in between should be enough. It should be about one inch. So you'll be able to add half inch on both sides. That's going to go ahead and flip this like so. Is it. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my seam allowance. Like I said, I'll be adding 1.5 to this side, 1.5. Then I'll be adding half inch all around. Like so. Now, because I'll be joining this down part to another bodice, sorry, to the skirt part, I'm just going to add half inch seam allowance to this part now. Then I'll put the same thing for this other side. So I'm adding my half inch, yeah. Now, because I said you are going to be having a joining at this center front, you would also proceed to add an half inch to this center front here. So this would actually make it very easy for you to sew your plunging neckline. So you add your half inch round like this. So this is it now. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out.
all right guys so it's time to cut our yoke on our two nets so i was just going to go ahead and fold my net like this So I'm going to go ahead and fold it and then I'll pin my yoke to the net like this. So I'm going to go ahead and secure it with pin. Remember that the notes, um, the yoke, the net is a sheer fabric. So I'm going to pin it. And then you're going to add your seam allowance all around, half inch all around to like so. And then if you are going to turn the neck, you can actually go ahead and add half inch, but I don't like turning the neck because it's kind of like when you turn it, it becomes too firm at the neckline. So I'm just not going to add any half inch to it. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out now. Now at this lower part now, you would not cut it sharp like this. You're going to cut it in form of a block. You add your half inch and then you cut it you mark your half inch in form of a block i don't know if you get what i'm saying or if you can see what i'm doing anyway because i'm working with chalk you might not really see but when i cut it out i'll just show you what in form of a block looks like so it's not supposed to be sharp it's supposed to be in form of a block like so i'm just going to go ahead and cut this out <coughs> I said I was not going to turn the neckline, so I'm just going to ignore the half inch at that place and then I'll just cut this out. So, this is what I mean when I say you cut it in form of you can see I don't have a sharp edge there. So, this would actually make it easier to fix any kind of plunging neckline. So, you cut it in form of the block. And not in form of the sharp. When we get to the sewing machine, I'm going to show you how to work with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out another piece of this to make it two. All right, guys. So I'm actually going to add to fuse my interface into the fabric. You can also fuse interface into the fabric, but I won't be doing that because this is just a tutorial. But you can also do that to your lining to actually give you what stability. Now, like I said, this is my yoke, and remember I told you we are cutting it in the block form. So now the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and notch where your yoke is going to start from, not from the half inch seam allowance, but where it's going to start from. So my yoke is going to start, is starting from this. I'm just going to mark it out and then I'm going to not make a notch. Now your notch should not be more than half inch, please. You don't want to make a notch too excessive. So whatever you are doing, it's also be putting it on the lining fabric also. So I'm already going to add to notch on the lining fabric here. So by half inch, and also you would be notching your underbust. It's always advisable to notch your underbust on both the center front and the side front. So I'll go ahead and join this. Now I'm just going to show you how to join your bust here. So to this, I can actually add your wording, or you also fuse it with two layers of SD. So I'll give it that standing effect. So I'm going to match the underbust together like so, and then I'm just going to go ahead and sew this down on half inch only. You want to go ahead and back stitch. I'm just going to stretch the fabric under so that it actually fits in. But please ensure that you don't have pleats on your bust. I'm just going to stretch this.
I'm just going to go ahead and put the same thing for this other side too. Right side facing right side place. And then I'm going to sew down on the half inch. So the way I did for the main fabric is also the same thing. We'll be putting for the lining fabric, please. So at the end of this is where you should have. So you come in with your bust arm. This is what the bust arm looks like. And then you're going to place it on it like this. Open it up and then iron it flat so that it actually remains flat. And then it gives you a very, very nice copy effect. So I was going to iron this and then I'm actually going to press it. And as you can see, even without any form of cup or wadding or anything, it's actually, you know, it's copying. Let me use the word. It's actually copying. So once you actually get your underbust tightening accurately, then trust me, you will have issues doing this. If you still do not tighten your bust accurately, please, I have a video on underbust tightening on my channel. So I would actually advise you to check this video out. So I've also gone ahead to join both parts together. So the left and the right, and I stopped at the half inch here. Ensure you backstitch at that point. Ensure you actually backstitch. Let me just bring it in. I stopped at the half inch mark. Or the half inch notch i mean so i show you backstitch there and i'm also going to press this flat i put the same thing for my lining as you can see so this is what the lining looks like i'm also going to add to stitch it up to the half inch that is where the plunging neckline is reaching or where it is starting from depends on your point of view now i'm going to come in with my yoke so i actually went ahead to just make this a single yoke since this is just a tutorial you can actually go ahead and double it and please do not forget this block shape so what you're going to do now is you're going to notch it on half inch only that's the middle part let's see i'm actually gonna to notch it on half inch only because i'm sure you do not exceed the half inch i'm going to take out my paint then i'll bring in my fabric like so and then i would pin it down like this so please watch the way i'm actually pinning down as like hold this up so that you can see so i'm going to this middle part here I'm going to pin it down to this part, and then this other part will be for this other notch. So I'm going to pin it down, starting from the notches. Yeah, so this side here, and the other side for the other notch there. So the notches should match the notch. I'm going to secure it with a pin, like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and secure this also with a pin. So the notches should match the notches. Please note, I'm going to put this for this, and then I'll just go ahead and secure it with pin. Now, your yoke, that's the next part of your yoke, should just be overlap the real fabric by about 2, sorry, 0.25 inches. This is for you to actually ensure it is very, very firm. You know that net stretchy, so you want this to be firm. So that's making it overlap by 0.25, and then I'll just pin it down to where it ends, like so. I put the same thing for this other side. You can pin it down, or you can actually start sewing from one part, and then you repeat the same thing for the other part. But I'll just go ahead and pin this down, like so. Ensure it overlapping by 0 0.25, like so. So this would actually help your yoke to have that V and avoid it turning to you by the time you are done. I'm just going to pin it down to this part also, and then I would sew. So once I've secured it with paint now, I'm going to sew it on the fabric for the fabric and the lining. I'm just going to put it like this, and I will start sewing on half inch only. So you just want to take your time to do this. Ensure that you are not sewing on any part of the net. Ensure it's not forming gathers. That's really, really take your time to do this.
I want to ensure that mine is not forming any form of brothers. That's why I see me using my um my fingers to arrange this. So when I get to this middle point now, I'm just going to secure it on that half inch there, where the half inch is stopping. I need to secure it there. Just back stitch at that point. Back stitch. And then I'll take out my threads. Then I'll flip it to this other side and then starting from the half inch also i'm going to go ahead and sew this down so you start from the notch you made at that point and then you just work your way up to the top part of the fabric or the yoke Like I said, just keep arranging so that you don't have gathers there, any form of gathers. So, once you're done. So you can see the sharp V there now. So you see all these excesses now. We'll be using our lining to what? To cover it up. So I'm just going to bring in my lining like so. And I'll pin it the same way also. I'm just cutting on my threads here. So this is how you should also pin down your lining to it. Now, to sew, I like flipping it to the other side like this so I can actually see the seam lines on the fabric. And then I'll just go ahead and follow that seam line and sew it down also. So I'm just going to follow that seam line and make sure I sew it down on my half inch. So I'm just going ahead and just following that seam, seam line. Secure it down and then I would sew, ensuring that I'm not picking any fabric on that till I get to where I have my notch. So I'll keep checking to make sure I do not have any seam whatsoever on that there. So by the time I get to that, my notch, I'm just going to go ahead and back stitch. So as simple as that. I put the same thing for the other side. I'm just going to go ahead, flip it over like this. Let me just go ahead and secure this with my pin again. And then I would sew on that same seam line I've made already. Ensuring that you're not picking any part of the fabric or the lining on that. As I see checking because I don't want to actually that to so and end up losing again. So I'm done. just going to go ahead and then now you also want to go ahead and add emming gum to this part so that by the time you actually flip it over and iron it, everything stays really really flat. So I'm just taking out my paint and also you want to go ahead and notch the neckline so that it relaxes like so and for this other part too i'll just flip this to the other side and you can see what we have there so you can see you have your sharp v by the time you press this open 
you have that sharp V, not the U or the rounded shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and press this, pin it down to my mannequin so that you actually get to see the end result. So this is the end result and you can see the sharp points there. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, kindly give us a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye!